Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Definition and this is the channel where we explain it so you don't have to. John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum is finally here and the brand new film in the franchise has a hell of a lot to unpack from it. Throughout this video I'll be breaking down everything that you need to know about the movie as well as giving my thoughts on it. This is full spoilers ahead so if you haven't seen the film yet and don't want to have anything about it ruined then I highly suggest that you turn off now. With that out of the way, I'm your host Definition thank you for clicking this video and I just want to give a huge shout out to Slasher Fan for their support from day one and whether you've been here since the beginning or have just joined it means a lot to have so many people checking out the content so I hope you enjoy the video now sit back relax and let's get into my breakdown of John Wick 3. The third film in the franchise picks up immediately after John Wick 2, with the titular character trying to escape the streets of New York after gunning down a member of the high table. Wick has been made excommunicado, and to make matters worse, he now has a $14 million bounty on his head. Instantly, this feels like a huge step up from the prior films, with the world's top ranked assassins now after the character, and he truly feels like he's met his match a lot throughout. After escaping New York through a reconnection to his past and trading in a ticket for safe passage to Casablanca, Wick sets off on a journey to gain penance from the one who sits above the high table, known simply as the Elder. Meanwhile in New York, an adjudicator of the table has been revisiting those that helped Wick in the prior film and has instructed all of them to vacate their positions within one week. Amongst these are Winston played by Ian McShane and the Bowery King played by Lawrence Fishburne. Both of these refuse initially and are later scorned which plays heavily into the ending of the film. This is because the adjudicator has hired a man known as Zero who sees himself as an equal to John. Zero has been put in place to deal out punishment to those who dissent from the table and this puts Winston and the Bowery King at odds with them. Back in Casablanca, Wick meets up with Sophia played by Halle Berry who owes the character a marker after he successfully managed to get her daughter away from the dangerous life that they lead. Together the two discover the location of the Elder in what is probably the best ever dogfight put to film and another clear indicator that in this universe you definitely shouldn't hurt animals. After meeting with the Elder, John is told that his excommunicado status will be lifted if he returns to the Continental and kills Winston. However, he will have to remain a hitman and will be unable to return to a life without death. Upon arriving at the Continental, John agrees to join Winston in a war against the High Table and the location devolves into a war zone after it's deconsecrated and is no longer listed as a business zone. This finale is outstanding and I was blown away seeing some of my favourite characters from the Raid franchise getting their own fight scenes against Wick in what is some phenomenal Kung Fu action. Eventually Wick defeats all of the Adjudicator forces including Zero and a parlay is called in light of the destruction that has been caused. Now going into this film, I'm as I'm sure many just assumed that this was the last in the franchise with this being the closing chapter of the story that would in its wake leave room for the new TV show The Continental to take its place. However, the movie takes a swift turn in the last 10 minutes and sets up another film. In light of the parlay, Winston is told by the adjudicator that his powers and the continental ownership will be reinstated if he stops the war. This is a pretty attractive deal for the character who simply doesn't have the numbers to fight wave after wave of high table forces and thus he accepts. There's still one loose end though and that comes in the form of John and Winston realises that he has to kill the character or at least appear to. Winston shoots Wick off the Continental which seemingly kills him. You can't keep this guy down though and after his body cannot be found, we cut to Wick being wheeled to the Bowery King who still sits on top of his throne. The character is still covered in the cuts that the high table dished out earlier and it's clear he wants revenge. Together the two make a pact to take down the high table once and for all and it's an amazing setup for the next film in the franchise which will no doubt see Neo and Morpheus teaming up again. Now throughout the film you get the feeling that Winston was trying to manipulate the odds in his favour and that he had some control over Wick's fate and likely guessed that he would survive the fall. Similar to Wick he really wants to get rid of the high table as do many characters in the film including the director who raised Wick as a child. With New York joined together as a force they would provide an army that could actually stand against the high table and there are drop lines throughout the film about how New York would go to war with the group so I can definitely see this happening. The Continental TV series in my eyes would be the perfect vehicle to recruit and introduce all the gangs and whilst Ian McShane has stated that he won't be appearing in the show, Reeves himself has agreed to be a part of it. 
Thus, this could allow time for us to learn about all the aspects of the city, as well as see the army slowly being built that will take down the table. I really can't wait to see what they dish up, and hopefully this is the direction that they take, as I can see it making a brilliant show if that's the route they travel down. And now onto my review. John Wick just keeps getting better and better, and Chapter 3 is another outstanding action movie from start to finish. This really packs the delectable death humour that you've come to expect from the franchise, and there were several times I laughed out loud at just how over the top the action was. The choreography on display here is outstanding, and every moment feels like ballet playing out with guns. Each character does a great job with lacing each line of dialogue with subtext, and beat for beat this is probably the best film in the franchise, if not a close second. Now, if you didn't like the first two films, you're not gonna like this, but what the hell is wrong with you? These are some of the best action movies of our generation, and Chapter 3 ties the bow on what is an amazing trilogy from start to finish. John Wick Chapter 3 gets a 9 out of 10. Obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on John Wick 3, and if you feel like you still want to see more going forward. Comment below and let me know, and if you enjoyed this video then please like it, and make sure you check out my full plot leak breakdown video on the finale of Game of Thrones, which will be linked at the end. We've also just launched a merch section on the channel, so if you want to help support the videos and get something out of it, make sure you click the boxes in the description below. This is a channel for people who are mad into movies, so if that's the kind of thing you like, like, hit subscribe. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this. I've been Definition, you've been the best, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.